Greetings everyone, this is Not Expert here back again with another video. Today we'll be solving problem number 28 and the difficulty is generated at is medium. Uh, this problem was asked by Palantir but I've seen it being asked by Microsoft as well. So basically we have to write an algorithm to justify text. If you understand what justified text is, you can skip over. Uh, but basically you're given a sequence of words and an integer line length key and you need to return the list of strings which represents each line fully justified. Uh, more specifically, you should have as many words as possible in each line and there should be at least one space between each word. Uh, pad extra spaces when necessary so that each line has exactly length k and spaces should be distributed as equally as possible. With extra spaces, if any, you need to distribute them starting from the left. Um, okay, so pretty simple. You can sort of go through this entire problem. You can pause this video and go through this problem. But basically, you're given a list of words. So you can see the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog is the list of words which are given. And k, which is basically the max length of the line, uh, which is basically equal to 16. So when you sort of you know, push all these values in, um, you know, you can see that you have the and after the you have two spaces and then you have quick uh, after which you have one space and then brown. So basically what you want to do is you want to equal, like sort of distribute the spaces in such a way that you know they are equally distributed and if you're not able to equally distribute them out you're supposed to you know start from the leftmost and then you know keep on adding spaces from there. Um, cool. So fortunately we were able to find a similar problem on lead code and the problem is called as text justification. You can see over here it's given as hard. Um, actually most people sort of construe this problem as a dynamic programming problem but I believe you don't need to go over there. Uh, you can actually solve this <coughs> normally. So um, you can pause this video and check out the link given in the description below. Uh, but we'll just start with it and the way we'll start with this is by basically starting with a base condition that if you've not been given any words we return a value or uh, a none rather cool so um the way we're going to approach this problem is by setting up a few rules and the rules that we're going to set is um basically what's the condition at which you need to you know um spread out your elements or uniformly distribute out your spaces so that should basically happen when the number of letters that you've already encountered or the number of words each letter which is there inside the word uh, plus the number of spaces that you have, uh, plus the new word which is you know you're iterating on. If all of this is equal or sort of greater than max width, you know you cannot allocate that value. So when this condition arises, you would have to check for a few conditions. And the conditions would be uh, what if the previous word before the new word is actually or the number of letters or whatever you want to call this um, is basically one or the word is actually one. So um, if there's only one word after this condition, then what you want to do is you want to pad everything to the right, right? Um, similarly, if you have multiple words, uh, let's say n words, in that case, you need to sort of uniformly uh, distribute out the spaces. And also you have to, you know, add spaces if, if there's no uniform distribution possible. So let's say if you have um, three words like you have over here, uh, where you have three words, I'm not really to show that this is uniformly distributed, but let's just say it's not. Um, in this case, what you want to do is you want to keep on adding a space after these guys. So um, the way you would sort of go about this is through a round robin approach, you keep on adding it till the number is sort of satisfied. So this would be round robin approach. And at the end of all this, at the very end what you want to do is you would want to uh you know push all the words in one go and this is after the for loop has ended when there's something still left uh, all the words are going to get pushed inside together and they're going to be padded to the right so uh, taking that in con into consideration we'll start with our implementation so what we need is we need a result list because we need to store our results as a list of sentences i would say um and we also need another variable let's call it as cur and cur is basically going to be the number or sort of it's just going to contain the num the words that we've sort of encountered so far we're also going to have number of letters which is basically going to contain uh the number of letters that we have gone through till now cool 
So what we need to do is um, we have to, we know for a fact that we will be returning results. So let's do that. Um, and the way we'll be going through this approach is we'll be iterating through. So we'll say for W in, whoops, for W in words. Uh, for each word which is there, we'll sort of you know, check for this particular guy. Uh, but before we do that, we need to you know initialize all these guys as well. So cur is going to basically be a list of all the words that we've encountered so far. And the number of letters are going to be the number of letters that we have encountered so far. So we'll do that, let of w and this and that. Cool, good enough. Um, also, which we need to sort of make sure is after we've you know uniformly distributed all these guys, uh, cur and number of letters are going to get reinitialized. So we need to remember the reinitialization phase. Um, basically, we'll do that afterwards. So uh, let's just you know do our check for the first rule that we have. What if the number of letters which we have, right? So we'll say number of letters uh, plus the spaces. So the way you can sort of calculate the spaces over here is by basically suggesting what's the length of cur, um, and that should sort of help us out. So we'll just say length of cur, um, and also what's the length of the present word that we add. This would be the present word. If all of these combined are greater than the max width, uh, then we basically have a problem. Um, we need to sort of you know use all these rules to identify how do we need to you know push out or store the values inside our result. Cool. So first thing that we will do, we'll say what if length of current, sorry, length of curve is equal equal to one. Basically, if there's only one word and it's occupying all the space, what needs to happen? So if there's only one word and it's occupying all the space, we need to pad it all out. So the way I'll be doing this, I'll be using concatenation. Um, this is not the right approach. You should probably use format or something like that, but we'll just use this for the sake of um, you know, time. Uh, and all we're doing over here is basically number of letters which are going to be stored are going to be the number of letters which have been encountered so far. And you know, if we subtract that with the max width, that will be the number of spaces which are required to fill out this entire length as k. Cool. Uh, and the other thing which we need to handle is what happens if we have n words. So n words would be like if you have this is and an inside your inside your um current list and number of letters would be some value, um, and you encounter example, what would happen in that case? So in that case, what we need to understand is what are the number of spaces which are required, right? Uh, pretty simple. So number of spaces which can be calculated is the same way. So number of spaces would be max width minus number of letters that you have. Uh, <clears throat> and apart from that, what else do we need? We also need to identify whether they can be uniformly distributed. And if not, how do we go about it? So uniform distribution is actually pretty easy. And the way we can sort of do that is just by dividing the number of spaces uh, by a number of words which we have so far. But what we would need is we would also need the remainder as well. So we need a quotient and we need a remainder. So the way we can do that, let's actually write it down that we need a quotient and a remainder. The quotient will sort of help us to define the uniform distribution. And the remainder would be the one which would help us analyze if we need to, you know, push in spaces in the round robin approach or not. So the way we can do that is by actually setting a few variables. We'll call it space between words and uh, extra spaces. This is called extra. So if we do a div mode, and if you don't know what div mode is, I'll be getting into it in a minute. Let me just type this out. Um, or actually, this is norms. Oh, wait, it's normal spaces. Uh, let's just call this norm spaces. That's a bit of a mention. So, number of spaces that we have, um, and length of current minus one. Um, so, what's happening over here? A div mode is basically a function in Python which takes in two parameters, and it's basically, you know, it's doing the uh, sorry, num spaces are uh, divided by length curve. Uh, that would be the quotient, and if you do modulus of that, that would be the remainder. So it just sort of returns that value, and um, it's just returning the quotient and the remainder with the two uh, values that you're passing in as the parameters to the function. 
uh, and also the length curve minus one, the minus one over here is basically due to the fact that um, if you have three words, um, you don't need to give the third word, the last word, an extra space. So for those reasons, you do minus one, so that you know you can only give the required spaces. All right, cool. So we have a number extra, which is basically the extra number of spaces that we want. And what we can leverage in this case is by basically doing a for loop to the number of extra values in a round robin fashion, but we'll be doing it on the curl list. So as you remember, inside the curl list, what we were maintaining was each word. Now, all we need to do is inside each word, we just need to append an extra space. So it will keep on going on till it can, and it just keeps on you know pushing the elements from there. And when it's, sort of, when it's done with that, what we need to do is we need to, you know, take into account the space between words because those are the spaces which are actually required in a uniform distributed way uh, and just join the curl list by the spaces, uh, number of spaces divided by uh, space between words. So let's do that. So we'll just do result dot append. Um, and all we're doing over here, we're doing space into space between words this will sort of you know handle our uniformity and if we do a join with the curve it'll just join the entire list with the number of spaces and the other extra spaces are handled over here uh, and that should sort of you know take care of this particular rule and the last rule which we sort of need to take care of is basically what would happen um, if we've sort of come out of the for loop, but you know, we've not handled everything. Uh, there's still some values inside curve and number of letters. Uh, but before we do that, we also need to take care of the fact that uh, when this if condition is satisfied, at the end, we need to reinitialize everything else. So we we'll reinitialize number of letters and the current list as well. And the reason for that is pretty simple because you, you are basically, um, you know, you've already pushed inside the result and you're coming on to a new um, new sentence or a new number, right? So that's the main reason behind this. And all we want to do now is basically if you have some values present, so the way you'll sort of append it inside your um, result inside is basically you'll do a simple join. Um, and as you can see over here, the spaces are the ones which are coming afterwards. So um, we need to handle that as well. So we can do that. We'll just say uh, concatenate that string, uh, the joint string with the number of spaces which are required, uh, which can be computed as the max width minus the number of letters which we have, right? The number of letters which we have and the length of current, which is there. And we need to add one to this. Um, and that should basically be it. So, and at the end, we are returning the result and we should get our answer. So we'll put a few prints in place just so that we have a better understanding of what all we have done so far. So we'll do normal and the result as well. So let's just run this code and hopefully it should run. <clears throat> so as you can see here, uh, you're iterating this, this gets pushed to curve, a length a letter of, sorry, number of letters, which is there, it becomes four, um, then is gets pushed to curve, uh, this gets updated to six, then and gets pushed. When it comes to example, example cannot be pushed. So this entire curve list needs to get computed again and needs to you know uniformly distribute all its pieces. And the way it's sort of doing that is by, you know, it sort of returns it inside your resultant list, and this is the representation for it. And then you add example, and then the same thing happens over and over again. And you can see the output is the same as the expected output. Um, all we need to do is submit the solution, and hopefully it should run. Awesome, so you can see it's running pretty quickly. Uh, and again, you don't really need to worry about all these things because you're just getting the job done. Um, 
but that's the entire approach all you have is a number of letters and a curve value which contains a list of words that you've encountered so far and you've just you know put in a few rules and you know you've abided to all those rules and gone forward from there cool so that's it for today's video um again if you did not understand this problem statement or if you did not understand the approach do leave it in the comments below and i'd love to come back to you um again if you did like this video do give a like and do subscribe to this channel we are discussion over here and we would love to have you and if you've already subscribed you're awesome we all know it and have a great day thank you